Hi, welcome back to The Wandering Wesleyan and our continuing series on walking in the Word. And uh, if you are enjoying what you're seeing and, and learning, please subscribe to this channel and uh, like this video. That helps the, uh, the logarithms out there in YouTube land uh, spread what, what we're learning here. So we talked about the first two chapters in Genesis last week. And uh, these, I'm sorry, first two verses in the first chapter of Genesis last week. And we talked about how the Spirit of God was in the formless, empty, dark, watery nothing before anything existed. And before anything existed, there was God. God exists before anything. So we're going to go into creation. And this covers verses 4 through 31 of the first chapter of Genesis. Now, what I would like you to do, if you have a notebook, um, make a column or a, a table of sorts. And it's going to be three on one side and three on the other side. And what I would like you to do in each day, so the first one, the first column on the left, will be day one, underneath that day two, underneath that day three. The second on the right will be day four, day five, and day six. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in what's being created during this time. So, day one. What do we have here? So if we go to verse three of chapter one. And I'm reading it out of the Christian Standard Bible here. Then God said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the dark night. And there was evening and there was morning one day. So here we have a few verses and there's a lot packed into this first day. Now, after every day, the writer of Genesis here puts in there was morning, there was evening, and then there was morning. This signifies a block of time. What do we mean by day? Now, I got to be careful here because there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different people interpret this differently. So, day or the word yom in in Hebrew means a 24-hour period. And the there are folks that believe that this creation story happened over a series of literal 24-hour periods. Okay. There are others who interpret day to be a general period of time, meaning that it could be a minute, could be thousands of or millions of years. But day means a period of time, a generalized, non-specific period of time. And this is where we get a lot of controversy over the scientific background of creation. And I really think, and this is Chaplain Greg talking, this isn't, I'm not a scientist, I don't pretend to be a scientist. Um, I got solid C's in my science courses in high school, yeah. And so I, I let the Bible be the Bible, and I let science be science. The Bible is not a science text. The Bible is God trying to speak to us. And I think when you try to fit some sort of scientific creation theory into the text, you're missing the point. The point is, God is trying to say something to us through this creation narrative. Now, let's just look 
at what's happening in this first day. So in this first day, there is light. Light is separated. Light and dark are separated. The light is called good. The darkness isn't. Light is called good. So the writer of Genesis is trying to tell us that God enjoys the light. God revels and exists in the light. Light is an important theme throughout scripture. And God calling light good is important. Dark is the uncreated chaos that existed before day one. So God is separating those two things. Light is day, dark is night. So if you're putting things in your first column, you would put light and dark, day and night. That's what's in the day one. All right, let's go to day two. And we're going to start at verse six. Then God said, let there be an expanse between the waters, separating water from water, so that God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, evening came, and then morning, the second day. All right. The waters separate. Remember what our Jewish friends think about water. It represents, or, or big waters represents chaos, represents uh, just this unwieldy, dangerous place. So he separated the waters. So when they look up in the sky and they see the, uh, above the sky, the heavens, they believe that is water up there. So they, he, God separated the waters. Water separate. There's a watery heavenly dome, and then there's water on earth. In between the two waters is what? Sky. The chaos water still exists, but in between, this is where creation is going to come into being. Notice there's no declaration of good in this verse. Okay? So, separated waters. Waters up above, waters down below. Sky in between. Ooh, this is getting good. Let's go to day three. All right. Then God said, let the, wa let the water under the sky, and I'm starting in verse nine here. Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth in the gathering of the water he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, the seed-bearing plants according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, and according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came the third day. All right, the third day. The waters are now separated. That happened on the second day. But now land appears. Earth appears. The waters around the land are called sea. They're still chaos. They're still disruptive but they're called sea and earth is now where the creation is starting and we get plants we get all kinds of plants plants start coming up out of the earth that tells us that earth produces life the plants are the beginning of life so what the writer of hebrews is telling us is out of nothing came light and the chaos is separated and within the separation of chaos is a place for creation the earth is created and out of the earth comes light life okay 
You following me? So those are the first three days. And if you think about it, those first three days are containers for what's going to happen next. All right? Think of them as containers. So in day one, remember, we have the separation of light and dark and day and night. So what does that mean? Let's go to verse 14. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day and the night. They will serve as signs for seasons and for days and for years. They will be lights in the expanse of the sky and provide light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule over the day and the lesser light to rule over night, as well as the stars. God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, to rule the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. Evening and evening came and then morning the fourth day. Wow. So, in the separation of light and dark, day and night, we now have stuff put into that. The greater light is the sun for day, and the lesser light, the moon, is for night. Even in the dark, God shines his light. Even in the chaos and in the evil of night, God is shining his light. We even have a bonus there. Stars. Stars are out. Um, and the ancient mind would look at stars and they would think of them as angels or demons. So this is really filled with a lot of spiritual stuff. So we have the container on day one and the stuff put into it on day four. So what happens in day five? Well, look back at day two. We have separated waters. So what do you think is going to happen? Then God said, starting at verse 20, Let the water swarm with living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the large sea creatures, and everything living, every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kinds. He accredited every winged creature according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply. Key. That's what blessing is. Being fruitful. Multiply. He blessed them. Be fruitful. Multiply. And fill the waters and the seas. Let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and then morning the fifth day. Day two, the waters separate, waters above, waters below, sky in between. What does he fill them with? Birds and fish. Whole lot of birds and fish. And they were ordered to, be, to multiply, to grow, to expand. Day six is coming. And day six is important. Because this is his most important day of creation. He has made the earth. He has separated the waters. And he has created plants and birds and animals. I'm sorry, birds and fish. He hasn't created animals yet. That's on day six. So let's read that. Chapter, uh, verse 24. Then God said, let the earth produce living creatures. According to their kinds, livestock creatures that crawl the wildlife of the earth, according to their kinds, and it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man, Adam, let us make the Adam. We're going to get into that next week what does that mean so god created the adam the human in his own image he created him in the image of god he created them male and female 
the human, the Adam, isn't just the man. It's the man and the woman. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, giving them the same order that he gave the rest of creation. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. Now here's a little extra. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains this. This will be food for you, for all the wildlife of the earth and every bird of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth, every, everything having, having breath and life in it. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw that he had made it, and he was... It was very good indeed. Evening came, and then morning, the sixth day. Animals have been created on the sixth day. So, day three. The waters separate, and there's land and plants. And now God is filling that space with animals. And as a bonus, he's creating a very special creature called the human. The human is male and female, and they are to go and subdue and rule God's creation. So think about that. The human, who is the image of God, who reflects who God is, is to take their special mission and expand creation. They're to be fruitful, multiply, subdue and rule creation. This isn't about science. Let science be science. This is about God ordering the universe and bringing a special creation, the human, into being. Now humans, I think we have enough time that we can get into this. Let's talk about this real quick the humans, the Adam. So verses 26 through 30 talks about this, created just like everything else, but it's made in the image or the likeness or the reflection of God. The human is meant to reflect God's goodness, creativity, and character. The human is meant to take the reflection of the creator into creation. Be fruitful and multiply means more for humans than just making more humans. It means to make families, make cultures, make art and music as a part of reflecting God's creative image. Make gardens that bring beauty into the creation. Being fruitful and multiply doesn't just mean having babies. It means being, being fully creative and reflecting of God. They're created completely, listen to me now, they're created completely as male and female. Not just male, but male and female. The fullness of humanity is in the two genders, male and female. And all plants are given for food. Now, those are the six days of creation. There's a seventh day. And that's what we'll talk about next week, where we'll start next week. We'll start with the seventh day of creation. And we'll start looking at the patterns that are there. So, that's it for this week. I'm Greg Johnston, your chaplain, Wandering Wesleyan. If you are enjoying this series, please like the video, subscribe, and uh, I'll talk to you next week. Be blessed.